Okay. Hello, everybody, and welcome to our webinar, Using Social Media to Maximize the Impact of Events. I just, our first screen, we have um, our hashtags, and Jay Hilde and Noah has in cuts that we'll be using on July 13th, and we just want you folks to keep those in mind during the presentation um, as we talk about and use the language around hashtags. So we're going to start in a minute with Carolyn Anderson from the Center on Budget and Policy Priorities, and she will be joined with um, her colleague Teddy Letter from the Center, and then also Nita Arche from um, the um, Housing and Community Development Network of New Jersey. Again, I'm Kate Kelly with Monarch Housing. We want to thank you all for taking the time to join us, and I will be moderating. So Carolyn, I'm going to go to the first slide, and then um, feel free to begin your portion of the presentation. Okay, great. Thanks so much. Hi, everyone. So I'm going to briefly touch on why social media is important in general, and then I'll be um, turning it over to my colleague, Teddy, so she can tell us about the nitty-gritty of how to use social media in general and for events in particular. Um, so it's just a few reasons of why social media is important to, to use, especially for um, as advocates. Um, the first point is that policymakers are on social media, which I'm sure since you're from New Jersey you all know <laughs> because Cory Booker is a superstar on social media, um, but it's really effective to engage with your, uh, policy, your, your members of Congress and other policymakers you know, semi-directly, you can talk directly to them or their staff, um, whoever is managing the social media, um, and in a way where other people can see it. So there's a performative aspect to it that's really helpful. Um, and you can also monitor their social media to see what they're projecting as their priorities, and so it can be a helpful information gathering tool. Um, and you can also use it as a platform to start building relationships or to, you know, maintain relationships with those people. It's it can be a supplement to other ways of building those relationships. Um, secondly, journalists are on social media. So it's a, no, it's a place where you can also build relationships with journalists. Um, and it's especially helpful because you can use the social media and journalists to help shape the narrative of what they're writing from the beginning. Um, you can, you know, you can mention them and, you know, sort of get in their heads about how they should frame a story because a lot of where they do their first talking with colleagues about these things is on Twitter and other social media. Um, third, your people, your constituents are on social media. Um, so Teddy will get into this more, but you sh you can figure out where your people are, are most active, on which social media platforms are most active, and then go there and so reach them where they are in a really effective way. And then finally, specifically for this presentation, you can do it really easily on the go. So it's kind of the perfect uh, tool for events. It's uh, because you can you ha you're doing interesting things that you can take pictures of or tweet or post on Facebook about, um, and keep your constituents and policymakers up to date on what you're doing, and then also you know keep them accountable for what they've said they've they do. Like if, if people say that they will write to your member of Congress and you are at a lobby visit with them, you can say, we're here, you should write your member of Congress or, you know, our member of Congress about this now. Um, so, you know, so there's a lot you can do with these, these platforms while you're out at events or at, you know, lobby visits, things like that. Um, and in fact, in some ways it's better on the go because you have more to talk about. <laughs> um, and so with that, I'm going to turn it over to Teddy. She's um, a digital communications associate at the Center on Budget and Policy Priorities, and she's going to tell you everything you need to know about how to get active on social media. And, and Teddy, this is Kate. I'm just going to just um, say briefly for all of you who are listening to the webinar, if you have questions as we go forward with the presentation, please use the box on the control panel for GoToWebinar and submit your questions, and we will address all of them at the end. Um, so, Teddy, just and also let me let me know if you want to let me know when to advance your slides and make sure I'm keeping up with your presentation. Sure. Thanks, everyone. Um, so, to get started, I mean, there are three most popular social media platforms. Uh, especially for advocacy groups, and those would be Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. Um, I have listed Instagram, which isn't the most popular, but it's so good for on-the-go advocacy because you can link it to Facebook. Um, so if you just post on Instagram, it automatically posts on Facebook, saving you time. Um, as Carolyn mentioned, Twitter is a wonderful place to build a professional profile and engage with the policy community, politicians, key decision makers, 
and of course journalists who will help broadcast your story. Um, though, and Facebook um, also just allows you. There's some like key differences between different between the different platforms. Uh, Facebook allows more space than Twitter to write out your thoughts. It's more personal, and it can bring a different type of audience than what is on Twitter. Uh, next slide. So the uh, Coalition to End Homelessness is both on Facebook and Twitter, and this is how they promoted the same exact story to give you an idea of how one can do this. On Twitter, they have the link to the news article. They have some very basic information, Wednesday coverage on homelessness. On Facebook, they're allowed to talk a little bit more about what's going on, tag the appropriate people, use the appropriate hashtags, but there's just a little bit more space um, to better advocate for what they're hoping for, which is ending homelessness in San Francisco. Um, next slide. So with the most popular social media platform for something like an advocacy day, Twitter. Basic, what is it? It's a social media tool that allows users to share short thoughts, links, photos, videos, and other media. What's nice about Twitter is you can post as much as you want. No one's expecting you to over-tweet. The more you tweet is actually the better. It raises your engagement. It raises your profile. It raises your influence. So here we have an example of Cory Booker uh, when they were doing the sitting on the floor. Notice he tagged the appropriate representative, John Lewis. He has the appropriate hashtag allowing people to search and see more people being able to see his post. Next slide. There are some very basic terms for Twitter. Uh, your handle is your identity. It's the name. So for at Rep. John Lewis on the last slide, this is what yours would be. Um, normally, it's an organization name. But if you'd like a personal one, that can work too. Your Twitter feed is the collection of tweets you've composed and tweeted, um, a little bit like your own personal Facebook page. Followers, or is anyone who wants to follow your tweets, the more followers you have, the greater influence one can have. And the greater, more people see your posts, more people click on your links, basically the greater engagement you can have. And your timeline is a collection of all the tweets you, people you follow have made updated in real time, a little bit like your news feed on Facebook if you are familiar with that. Next slide. The very basic terms, um, a retweet is one you've directly copied from another user. So say your partner um, or another organization that you're on the hill with has tweeted something out great, you just retweeted and all your followers can see that. This allows you to share posts easily with people who are interested in what you're doing. Um, you can mention any user you'd like in a tweet. So at Cory Booker, at Rep. John Lewis, at Center on Budget. Um, anyone who has a Twitter, you can mention them. And they'll see that in their notifications that you tweeted them, allowing them to see your tweet. And also, once again, giving you a little bit more visibility and greater engagement. And a hashtag is something you can add to a tweet to make it searchable by subject. So as we have here in our example, we hashtagged housing. And anyone who's searching housing on Twitter can see this tweet. Um, letting other people who might not know about New Jersey Hill Day or a lot of housing issues that you guys are focused on be able to find this and learn more about what you're doing. Uh, next slide. So this is tweeting on the go and the logistics. What's a little bit, it can be a little bit different tweeting on the go than say tweeting just on a professional organization. You should have all of this information handy uh, you should know which hashtags your organizations are using, which would be New Jersey Hill Day and no housing cuts. If you have links, say you have a letter you guys have created to write to your representatives, say you have a blog post that you guys want to link to, say you have something on your website, you can add this to a tweet. What's really nice is having this saved in your phone so you can just copy and paste it right into the tweet um, instead of having to search for it on the go. Um, here is a list that I've created of all of your congressional representatives and senators, their uh, Twitter handles and Facebook names. Um, keeping a list like this while you're, while you're meeting with them is really handy. Did you take a picture with one of these guys? Did you meet with one of their staff? Did you have a really good conversation? Know their name, tag them on Facebook. Anyone who follows them will see, um, 
anyone on Facebook who's tagged, can, it shows up on their wall. On Twitter, if they see it in their notifications, they can retweet it. It just lets them know that you're talking about them, and they, you guys have had a great conversation. They're more than likely to share it, um, allowing, I mean, all of their followers and all of their constituents who follow them on social media to see it. Uh, and that can be a huge, huge, huge boost, as you'll see next slide. So this is Cory Booker's Instagram that he also put on Facebook. Um, notice he has nearly 1,900 likes on Instagram. This got an engagement of, I think, close to 5,000 likes on Facebook. Um, this can just allow you to connect very easily with your congressional representation and their constituents. Um, so uh, next slide. Normally, sorry, sorry. <laughs> no, it's okay. okay. Uh, normally, I recommend against linking Instagram and Facebook for a professional organization in the sense that you want your material on both to be creative for both and to be specific for both. Um, but when you're on the go, having Instagram and Facebook linked just makes a lot of sense. You can just take your photo with your congressman or your senator, or your staff, open Instagram, write what you need to write, add a link, add a mention, add a hashtag, press share, and it's on both platforms, saving you just that much more time. Um, so I've given you a little list of how exactly best to do that. And um, that is the end of my presentation. I'm more than happy to take questions when we get to that point. Okay, yeah, we have, I see that we have two questions, but just in case we get similar questions or it gets answered, I think we'll wait and do questions at the end, but thank you, Teddy. Um, so um, now I'd like to introduce Nina Arche, who's the media coordinator with the Housing and Community Development Network of New Jersey. Nina? Hi, everyone. So for those of you who are familiar with our organization, we recently had a legislative day here in Trenton, basically what you guys are going to be doing in D.C. in a couple weeks, but here in Trenton with our state legislators. So we used our own hashtag, um, NJLegDay, whereas for congressional reception, you're going to be using hashtag NJHillDay. And um, I'm just going to talk to you a little bit about the successes with that and observations. Um, go ahead and move to the next slide. All right, so basically I, a lot of this stuff has been already said by a, um, the Center for, Center for Budget. Um, basically the whole point of this to be on social media, you reiterate your message. Um, it tells your legislator this is what I care about and reminds them I'm about sorry, what you Nina, talked I'm about. sorry, this this is Kate. It, there seems to be a little background noise, so if I, you're I'm sorry. on the I'm just gonna call okay. okay. Is that better? Hello? Yes, yeah, sorry. Okay. 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 Go ahead. All right. So using social media after your meetings, um, you know, it reiterates what you talked about to your legislator and their followers. It also shows the people who support you that you're working to inspire change. And it creates a sense of community. So people who also care about what you care about can follow along and join in the conversation. And it allows you to be your own media, meaning with the changes in today's news environment, you know, a lot of newspapers are shutting down not as many reporters as there once were, you can present your own news to your followers, supporters, funders, and um, it's just another way to maximize your visibility. All right, Kate, go to the next slide. Okay. Okay, so what kind of things should you be posting during the congressional reception? So obviously things your target audience cares about, um, whether that's um, you know, anything relating to the issues um, linked to the event press release or any interesting news stories. We're talking about housing cuts. Is there a good news article that came out about the housing cuts or maybe something from the Center for Budget and Policy Priorities? You also maybe link to your website 
any kind of relevant videos that were made throughout the day or quotes, um, any interactions you had with these fellow advocates in addition to your conversations with the legislators or their staff. Okay, next slide. All right, my favorite thing to do, if you have nothing else to say, number one thing you should do is thank your representative. Thank them in person, but also thank them on social media. Make sure to tag them. Make sure to use your hashtag, MJ Hill Day. Pictures, take as many, many, many pictures. People are very visual. Pictures have more, um, they're more likely to attract attention than text. And of course, tag the representative, tag other people who were there with you, any organizations. Um, just communicate. Communicate in person, but also through social media. All right, next. All right, so here I mentioned our uh, legislative day. So here are some examples of social media that was used throughout that day. Um, we have one of our advocates who you see she tagged the Senate president, tagged our organization, and used our hashtag. And she actually had um, Senate President Sweeney like her post. Can go to the next slide. Sorry. Okay, here's another. Ex oh. Okay. Okay. Um, and one of the organizations who attended that day posted a picture of their meeting with their legislator, tagged the legislator, used our hashtag, and the legislator retweeted that post. Next. Same thing with another member organization. They tagged us, used our hashtag, and tagged other organizations that were part of that meeting. Next, please. And so I mentioned that you can use this experience to promote yourself to your supporters, followers, show that you're getting things accomplished. And that's what Triple C did here. They posted their picture on their Facebook page with a nice message. Basically let people know that they're on the ground fighting for them. Next, please. And we were actually fortunate enough to have one of the legislators post on her own Facebook page pictures from her meetings. So that was pretty cool to see. And she used our, um, our hashtag. That's why a hashtag is so important, because it gets everybody on the same page and it allows everybody to be part of the conversation. Next. OK. Kate? Yes, hi. OK. Um, well, thank you for those great presentations. I don't, before I open up to questions, did either uh, for the folks at the Center on Budget or for you, Nina, did any, either of those presentations give you any closing comments you wanted to make? or? If not, I can make a few, and then we can move on to the questions. Um, no, I, th I, I think everything Nina said was great, and we agree with it. <laughs> <laughs> OK. Well, I just want to reiterate my thanks to everyone for joining us on this webinar and also joining us on July 13th. You know, We've got, as you know, over 350 people registered from across the state, which means that both of our senators and our members of Congress and the local news outlets will be able to hear, you know, that there is, rep you know, folks coming from their districts, from their reader, um, from their readership base, and so that, you know, is very helpful to our efforts. I'm going to um, start with our first question from Marianne Jink. Kowski with um, Advanced Housing asking, how do we set a Twitter or Instagram, Instagram account up for our agency? Um, I could take a stab at it, but I don't know if Carolyn, you or Teddy or you or Nina want to address that question. Um, I can address it. Okay. Um, all you really need is just an email address. Um, so if your organization has a very general email address, one that any person or yourself can have access to. Uh, go to Twitter.com, press make an account, follow the steps. Same with Instagram, same with Facebook. They have made it very user-friendly, very easy. Mm -hmm. The only thing, well, I was going to say be careful what you make your handle, but you can actually change it if you 
decide it doesn't work, so that gives you a lot of flexibility. <laughs> right. My one tip with handles is the characters of handles, so how many letters it has, counts to how many in your tweets. So like in a tweet can only be 140 characters. So if you make your handle very long, it'll be hard, one, to tweet and for other people to mention you. Yeah. I also want to mention that um, when picking that email, um, try not to use a specific employee. I know a lot of people probably use the executive director, but down the road, if that person should leave the organization, then you're stuck with this email and you may have to go through this process to change it. So if you have a general inbox, that would be the best option to use. Yeah. Okay. Great, thank you. Um, I'll move on to our next question from Linda Flores Tober with the um, Elizabeth Shelter. She wanted to know, would we be getting the list of Twitter and, um, and Facebook handles for and the hashtags prior to the event? And I think our plan is to send that out ahead of time before July 13th and also have paper copies of that available. Send it out ahead of time so people could have it on their phones as easy reference, but then we probably can also have um, hard copies of that available on the buses on July 13th so that folks have it at the ready. So yes, we will make sure folks have that information. Um, and our third and last question from Felicia Alston Singleton is, um, will these tools to get the attention of news reporters when you have stories that you want to put out to the public? I'm not sure if I'm understanding this question correctly. Um, but, do, oh, I guess, so will these, I guess she's, she's asking, we've talked a little bit about getting the attention of the elected officials, but will they also get the attention of reporters? So um, Carolyn, Teddy, and Nina, I defer to you to answer that. Yeah, so I'll just start by saying, I think what I would start by doing is ahead of the, the Hill Day, so you have like three weeks or two weeks, um, is identify who are reporters that are on the housing beat and are they writing any good stories or have they written any good stories in the past? And you can do a tweet or a Facebook post or an Instagram post um, that calls out that great story, links to it, and then says, we'll be talking to New Jersey state legislatures on the Hill, use the hashtag. So you're giving the reporter a bump and giving them a pat on the back for doing a good job and then also alerting them to the fact that this is happening and they should be following this hashtag. So it's kind of starting ahead of time so they're putting it on their radar while also flattering them. I think it's the most effective way to do it so then you have their attention on July 13th. Great, thank you. And I'll just add, um, for those of you on the call who, who didn't see it today, we um, today Monarch Housing Associates released the um, um, New Jersey counts 2016 numbers, so that both the statewide numbers and the county by county numbers from the point in time count that took place at the end of January. And so we will, we've had some feedback, some um, uh, response from reporters, and we'll be tracking over the next few days who covers the story. So that might be a logical group, at least for us at Monarch to begin with. And maybe, you know, we can share that with folks that were in this, on this call too. Those would be reporters that might be, you know, key people to reach out to. Any last questions before we finish up? Okay, given that I don't see any, um, I posted on this last slide my name, email address, and phone number, and also just the hashtags to remember, and Jay Hill Day and No Housing Cuts. Um, so please keep those hashtags in mind. We'll have those available prior to and day of the event, so you are using those when you're also using the Twitter and Facebook handles that we gave you. But if a question comes up after after this call and you want to reach out to me, if I can't answer it all, I can reach out to Carolyn, Teddy, and Nina and make sure that we get your question answered. But I just want to give a really big thank you to our presenters. You all gave great firsthand knowledge and we really appreciate you taking the time with us. And then also a thank you to those of us who took the time out of your day to join this webinar. And we look forward to July 13th. Have a good afternoon. Thank you. Thank you.